Mr. Gerard was attempting to fly from JFK to California, which is where he lived at the time. And he was wearing a t-shirt that said in English and in Arabic, we will not be silent. He had gone through security, had been checked, everything cleared. Um, he was trying to have breakfast. A government official and some people from JetBlue came up to him and essentially told him that he couldn't wear that t-shirt if he wanted to get on the plane. He said, uh, people are uh, offended because of your t-shirt. So at that moment, uh, I looked down at my t-shirt to see which t-shirt does he mean. And I figured out that I was wearing one of my t-shirts that read in both Arabic and English, we will not be silent. So I said, uh, I'm, you know, I apologize if this offended anyone but uh, I can't see why anyone would get offended by this message. He told them that it was his constitutional right to wear that t-shirt, and he asked if there was some law that prohibited him from wearing that shirt. One of the officers who was standing, he, he came a little bit closer to me and he said, he wanted to explain to me because I think he, he thought that, you know, this you know, naive newcomer to the U.S. who's very utopian, so he said, People in the U.S., they don't know anything about this constitutional rights. <laughs> and I said, well, I mean, I live in the U.S., and I know. And so he continued to argue for his rights and that he could wear the shirt and could get on the plane. They refused. And so eventually, because he wanted to get home, he agreed to put on another T-shirt on top of the shirt that he was wearing. An uh, officer who first approached me told me that uh, coming to an airport wearing a t-shirt with um, Arabic language is it uh, on it uh, is like going to a bank and wearing a t-shirt that reads, I'm a robber. To make matters worse, the JetBlue agents called him up to the boarding gate. They took his boarding pass from him, which was for the front of the plane. They ripped it up and they gave him a seat at the very back of the plane. Mr. Girard contacted a number of media organizations as well as the ACLU. He was very clear about what his rights are and decided that they had been violated in this situation and he wanted um, to seek vindication of them. This case is about the government's decision to censor Mr. Girard's speech and it's also about the racial discrimination that Mr. Girard suffered at the hands of JetBlue and the government. We're seeking damages against both the federal official and JetBlue, and we're also seeking an injunction against JetBlue to prevent JetBlue from ever doing this again to either Mr. Girard or to any of their other passengers. I heard some stuff on some conservative media stations about how racial profiling is such a good tool in dealing with our country's security and they were dealing with, with um, unconstitutional and illegal issues like racial profiling in a very casual way as, as if it's an issue that can be you know, used or not used optionally as if there were not generations of Americans who, who lost their lives and, and um, sacrificed everything that they had to change the law and change the constitution to a new constitution that uh, makes sure that everyone is, is legal and that no, there is no such a thing as racial profiling. Since September 11, 2001, airline profiling has been rampant. Many people who look like Mr. Javar have been singled out for different types of treatment based upon their ethnic backgrounds. The ACLU is involved in these types of cases because we believe that very important principles are at stake. The first is that our government should be protecting all of us. Our government should not be singling out anybody based upon someone's speech or ethnic background. When the government and airlines behave uh, in these ways, is really not making any of us safer. Many law enforcement experts will tell you, in fact, that racial profiling is completely ineffective. I think we definitely have seen an environment in which people are afraid, people are 
scared to say, their, to say what they want to say because they've seen what has happened. The ACLU has been involved in a number of cases involving President Bush where the Bush administration and agents of the Bush administration have removed individuals from public rallies because they've been wearing anti-Bush t-shirts or other paraphernalia. And so this can happen to anyone. In this day and age, there's always going to be passengers who um, are going to be afraid to fly, particularly with certain types of people. But airlines and the government, based upon their experience and based upon their training, should know better than to indulge that type of irrational fear. Instead, they should be doing everything that they can to quell those fears and to calm people down. The answer to speech that scares people or speech that offends people is more speech, not less speech. I believe it's my right and my responsibility as a newcomer to the U.S. to actually fight for my freedoms. It's not just because I'm, I'm just for me. It's not just because I think it's important for Arabs and Muslims. It's not just because I think it's important for minorities. I think it's important for America. I think it's important for the U.S. that we fight to wear the T-shirt with the three Arabic words on it. Maybe by itself it doesn't seem significant among the other disasters you know, that happen ar around the world. But believe me, the hugest disasters sta start by little, little small steps like this. People giving away their rights very slowly, thinking that this is patriotic, thinking, thinking that, you know what, I will give away some of these rights because I love my country. I will give away some of my rights because I, I hate my enemies. I will give away more of my rights because I think it's important for national security. And then you end up living in a country where you can't talk, when you can't breathe, when you can't do anything.